Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Claire Broughton, and today we'll be discussing robbery and assault. Robbery is classified as a violent crime because it, it involves the use of threat or use of force. This is often classified by location, such as highway robbery, which occurs on the street, personal robbery, which occurs in residences, and institutional robbery, which occurs in commercial settings. Figure 11-8 shows us robbery locations. You will see from this figure that street or highway robbery is the more, most prevalent and bank robbery is probably the least pre prevalent, which, about one, which is about 1.6% of all robbery locations. The lethal potential of robbery. Robbery carries the threat of lethal injury to the victim and it's the most likely felony to result in a homicide. In fact, it accounts for about 30% of all felony murders. The most frequently used weapon is a firearm, primarily a handgun. Most robbers are generalists with lengthy but varied careers, and few inmates in fact specialize exclusively in robbery. Robbery in public transportation. Robbery in mass transit is a rare event. They tend to follow one of three scenarios. First, the offenders select victims from passengers in isolated areas of large subway stations. Second, the offenders select victims outside station at isolated locations and times. Third, the offenders act on opportunity, lie in wait for passengers leaving public transportation. In fact, among transit workers, taxi drivers are at the greatest risk of robbery. So what is the motivation of robbers? Most robberies involve little planning, and the motivation is the need for fast cash. In contrast, for example, with burglary, wherein you have to sell the items that you stole from a residence for, or from a commercial institution, with a robbery, usually the target or the, the properties taken okay, is consumed immediately. So it's either cash or basic necessities, or it's often connected to the robber's hedonistic lifestyle. What are the alternatives to robbery? Obviously, legitimate work, borrowing, and committing other crimes, but these are not viable options for convicted robbers. What are drug robberies? Now, the majority of offenders specializing in street robberies usually preyed on other criminals. In fact, who are the obvious targets? Other drug dealer, dealers. And they often acquire both money and drugs from these drug dealers. In fact, drug dealers who are victims of robberies are unlikely to report the victimization to the police for obvious reasons. Tra targeting drug dealers is risky because of the possibility of violent retaliation. And robbers minimize risk involved in targeting drug dealers through the use of the following strategies. First, intimidation. Second, anonymity maintenance. And third, hypervigilance. Robbery is the most gender definition, differentiated crime in the U.S. other than rape. In fact, men and women are both motivated by robbery, uh, by money, but differ in how they carry out street robberies. Male robbers have a fairly uniform pattern. They use physical violence or a gun, and they tend to rob other women rather, rather than men. Ra other, so they tend to rob, rob men other than, rather than women, and they target male victims involved in street life. Female robbers, on the other hand, tend to rob other women using physical confrontation. They use sexuality to attract male victims, and they act as an accomplice to male robbers targeting men. What is aggravated assault? Aggravated assault is unlawful attack by one person upon another, wherein the offender uses a weapon or displays it in a threatening manner, or the victim suffers obvious or severe bodily injury. The type of offender, the typical offender profile mirrors that of homicide offenders. So wh what's the profile? Disproportionate involvement of males, African Americans, 15 to 34 years old, lower socioeconomic status, prior arrest records, and little, little offense specialization. Most aggravated assaults are spontaneous. Victims and offenders equally are equally likely to be strangers or non-strangers. The relationship by gender, however, is differentiated, 
and men are slightly more likely to be assaulted by strangers, but women are more likely to know their assailants. Stranger assault. The possibility of stranger violence creates much fear and concern. The probability of serious victimization by strangers is very low, however, and the likelihood varies by demographic characteristics. Assaults within families. Majority of assaults involve victims and offenders known to each other, often in familiar, familiar or intimate settings. It's difficult, family violence and is difficult to research there though because of family privacy. In fact, you know, there's a feeling that anything within the family, things that happen in the family should be subject to privacy and should not be um, told to anyone outside the family. Early studies of family violence found that women are more likely than men to become victims of domestic violence. The FBI report based on NIBRS data found that 51% of violent crimes involved victims and offenders who were related, and nearly all of them were assaults. Family violence compared to aggravated assaults generally, firearms are less likely to be used within the family, and in fact, family members use fists, hands, knives when they assault each other. Women are more likely to be victims of assaults within family than in the general population. Now let's discuss intimate partner assault. It's the assaultive behavior between individuals involved in an intimate relationship. The vast majority of victims are women. Men can also be victims, but this is less common. Separation assault is a vi particularly violent response by the male partner that occurs after a woman lives a, leaves a violent relationship. There's an overlap between lifetime intimate partner rape, stalking, and physical victimization. Figure 11-19 shows that, that us that um, there's an overlap. Uh, okay. For, for example, rape, physical violence, and stalking overlaps in about 12% of the cases. Okay. Thank you very much for listening to my lecture. My next lecture would be on bullying, cyberbullying workplace violence, hate crimes, and stalking. I'll see you then.